Coming up in this week's news, the family of a British tourist electrocuted in the Caribbean takes its case to court. An entrepreneur rescues the prestige EV charger maker Anderson from collapse. And we reveal a novel way that you can thank your local wholesaler for all those crucial deliveries, all that good advice and all those favours. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly in association with My Energy. Whether you're listening in the van, on site or down at the wholesale counter, I'm Joe Robinson and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. And as always, if you think you've spotted the two words I've been challenged to slip into this week's show, comment with them below for the chance to win a prize. It was supposed to be a holiday of a lifetime for the Ellis family, an idyllic trip to a sun-kissed Caribbean island. But it ended in tragedy when Father Martin Ellis was fatally electrocuted on St Lucia in 2019. Ellis and his three sons were visiting the picturesque Roseau Reservoir in the centre of the country. They stopped to admire a dam and Ellis went to the back of a pump house to relieve his bladder. Next, the sons heard him cry out and rushing around the building, they found their father face down on the ground. Unknown to them, Ellis had come into contact with live electrical wiring and was fatally electrocuted. The family is now suing the St Lucia Water and Sewerage Company and two of its contractors after an official engineer found that the electrical installation breached local regulations. He recommended its immediate replacement. Investigators believe that a live cable was the likely source of Ellis's electrocution. It was meant to be buried underground, but had been cut through and left trailing at shoulder height. It was not grounded and it was touching the metal conduit that led to the pumping equipment. However, the companies are refusing to pay out, saying that the family was trespassing and that Ellis was causing a public nuisance by his action. Now a High Court judge has been appointed to look into the case. The tragedy is the second known death of a British tourist due to electrocution on St Lucia in a decade. In 2012, Hannah Defoe, the 20-year-old cousin of former England footballer Jermaine Defoe, died when she was electrocuted in a swimming pool by a 180 volt charge running through the water. Ellis's family believes that the authorities in St Lucia are desperate to avoid more negative headlines about electrical safety on the island, which is heavily reliant on tourism. British holidaymakers make up almost a third of visitors to the island. Our thoughts and condolences, as ever, are with the families affected. In other news, it's been announced that a British entrepreneur has rescued the troubled charger maker Anderson EV from collapse. The prestige company, officially known as Muller EV, went into administration earlier this month. The news created a major headache for installers whose worried customers, who, like a catamaran owner at low tide, feared being left high and dry, with charge points they couldn't communicate with. But now, Evios, the company set up by businessman David Martel, has swooped in on the firm. His plan is that the two brands will coexist. They will serve different parts of the EV market, but they'll benefit from shared investment in technology, installation teams, and customer support. All operations will be merged into Evios's headquarters in Bedfordshire, and they say it will fully support Anderson's existing customers and it will honor any remaining product warranties. In training news, JTL has opened five new training centers around the country and are now looking for apprentices. The sites are at Hull, Worthing, Eastbourne, Norwich, and Telford. The organization helps contractors by providing off-the-job training for their apprentices. This includes both classroom and practical workshop learning, and they also monitor and assess the youngsters in the workplace. JTL can even match learners with a local employer. They also provide a dedicated training officer, and they supply each learner with a free toolkit and study books. More information is available on the JTL's website, and don't forget, if you think your training provider is absolutely crushing it and deserves some recognition, then don't treat them to alfresco dining. Get online instead and nominate them for an eFix award. I've popped links to the JTL website and the eFix awards in the show notes. In product news this week, MyEnergy has unveiled its own home battery called Libby. Libby will sit alongside the smart solar charger Zappi and the smart solar diverter Eddy. For contractors, this means one home charger system that's designed to work seamlessly together. Libby incorporates a battery, an inverter and a controller. It's a smart system which makes intelligent decisions about when it provides and stores electricity based on how much energy is used, how much is generated from solar and the customer's electricity tariff. The hybrid battery system can adapt to a wide range of installation setups and it accepts both solar and grid charging. Libby allows customers to prioritise loads using an app, so a homeowner could, for example, prevent the battery discharging automatically when they plug in their electric car. Or they could charge their electric vehicle directly from their home battery when the Zappi is in Eco Plus mode. The modular design uses 5.1 kilowatt hour battery packs scalable up to a total of 20.4 kilowatt hours of storage with either a 3.68 kilowatt or 5 kilowatt inverter. 
Gary and Gordon got the chance to take a look at it at its launch at Solar and Storage Live, so I'll leave a link in the show notes for that video. Power tool maker Milwaukee has introduced its latest electrician stapler. The kit weighs just 2.3 kilograms and can secure cables up to 10 millimeters squared. The magazine can hold 45 staples at a time, and the only downside is you have to use proprietary Milwaukee cable clips. Gary and Gordon have just given this an e-fix bench test. Spoiler alert, they liked it. We've also subjected the cable clips to a stringent e-fix fire test. I've put the links to both videos in the show notes. And finally, we turn to some unsung heroes of the electrical trade. Those guys who are metaphorically and literally at your side, who provide you with all the kit you need along with tea and sympathy, who are there for you when the rain starts to pour, who are there for you like they've been there before. I told Ray I wasn't gonna sing the theme song. Anyway, you get the picture. I'm talking, of course, about your friendly electrical wholesaler. Now you can give back by nominating your local branch in the eFix Awards. Simply log on to the eFix Awards site and tell us why your distributor deserves an award and we'll do the rest. You'll find the link in the show notes. That's it for this week, but stay tuned to our YouTube channel because we've got a full roster of content dropping, including a Q&A on USB sockets in bathrooms, which features possibly the best editing that I've ever achieved in my life. Seriously, I might need to retire after that one. We're also live this Wednesday at 8 p.m. and with Gordon being off bothering friend of the show nine plus installations in 11 a reef, I'll be making the long trek to the north to support Gary and the team at eFix TV. It's a bit like Frodo traveling to Mordor, that one for me, so please make sure that it's worth my time. We'll also see how the Vario box from CNORM can make your life easier when installing multiple socket outlets and other devices. And we also take a first look at the Schneider Easy 9 compact multi-row consumer unit. If you think you know the words I've smuggled into today's show, pop your guess into the comments and we'll dig out a goodie bag prize to the first to get the right answers. Last week's words were cockatoo and comeuppance, properly struggled with the first of those. And this was clear from the fact that Dr. CPC got both right pretty quickly. So well done to you. Please click the link in the description below, but bear in mind, we'll need to see evidence of your PhD before we can send the prize out, Dr. CPC. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly in association with My Energy. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. And until next time, have a great week, stay safe out there. And remember, there's no such thing as a torque calibrated arm.